Hello everyone and welcome to another week in our four weeks of Knitmas. Um, each week I'm featuring project inspiration for your holiday gifts and I will be showing you a collection of 12 knitted accessories which can be knit up quite quickly and with minimal cost. One to two skeins is the requirement. Some of the projects are ideal for beginners, some are more for intermediate, and some are more for advanced. So there will be something today to suit every level. And today I am featuring, if you haven't guessed already, it's going to be the 12 socks of prancing. So I have 12 socks to go through and what I will do is um, hold them up, describe a little bit about the stitch technique, the yarn, show some of the color choices and um, explain as much as I can to make it simplified and if you have any questions please post them in the comments as we go along. I'll try to watch the comments today and um, if not I can always answer your questions after, after the video. So starting with sock pair number one this is the lovely quintessence socks. These are knit cuff down. Generally there's two ways of knitting socks, either toe up or cuff down. And sock knitters are quite divided on that. Some, as, as I am, prefer the cuff down. And then some sock knitters will knit toe up on circular needles and even manage two socks at a time. Um, I prefer double point needles, but cuff down you can use circular or double point. So this is knit on a 2.75 millimeter needle. It has a very interesting pattern which looks complex. I'll bring it closer to the camera so you can see, but it's really not as complicated as what it looks like. It's basically just a knit to purl to rib with an extra technique thrown into the mix. And there you can see we've done the slip stitch heel which reinforces the heels and we have a little spice of color for the toe. So these socks are knit in a very plush, luxurious yarn. Um, the yarn is naturally hand dyed by a local dye team, mother and daughter, Natural U, and the pattern was featured in a subscription series that we collaborated on at the beginning of the year, but the yarn is still available in store, and the pattern is as well. If you're away from the store, then the pattern is available on Ravelry. So it does require a 100 gram skein of 4 ply fingering merino. Um, if you prefer, you can add in the little blend of color on the tips of the toes, just to spice it up a little bit. So we've paired some together for today just to show you and give you fresh inspiration. So this is a soft mauvey gray lilac with pops of yellow green and a darker purple and the mini color has pops of blue and gray and lilac and then another combination is the deep orange coral tones and then the pop color would be the softer peachy tones and then the third color combo we have today is the darker purple with pops of lime green and gray and a cream base and then for your contrast toe color you would have a three-tone lighter purple color. Just so you know there's a little bit of difference there but it's not too dramatic. So that particular pattern is available on Ravelry or in store. It's a really fun pattern to knit you don't feel that it is overwhelming. The technique is very quick to learn and it's just repeated over and over again. And it's basically knit two purl two ribbing with a little extra twist thrown in there. 
just to keep you on your toes. And next up, in our 12 socks of prancing, we have sidey way socks. Not at all what the name implies. These are knit, not knit sideways. They are knit also cuffed down with the reinforced slip stitch heel and the plain stocking stitch sole and toe. Um, the pattern sidey ways just refers to the Guernsey style effect that the knit and purl pattern makes. First the stitches drift to the left and then they drift to the right. Again, it's a very simple pattern. There is, I think, an eight row repeat to keep you on your toes again. And once you get the repeat established, it's easy just to do it from memory. So these are knit also in a fingering weight yarn. I have put the colors out on our little tree here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. So we have the dark charcoal, which is almost a black, but not quite. We have the light flannel gray, which the socks are knit in. And then a nice feminine uh, lilac heather parchment, which is a great neutral. And a medium charcoal. A green heather with undertones of reds and blues. And then a pretty blue heather with undertones of purple and green. So these are one skein socks, 100 grams. It's a mix of wool, acrylic, and nylon. It's a very durable yarn. It wears well, uh, 437 yards for under, just under $13. So that's an economical basic sock pattern. If you have somebody on your holiday gift list who just absolutely adores your knitted socks, I'm sure that would make them very happy. And next up we have number three, Alpaca My Socks. This one does not fall into the one or two skein project only because you've got the fancy little alpacas to knit in. So it does require three skeins, three colors, three skeins. But you'll find that some of the sock patterns that use very little of one of the colors you could always do a second pair of socks and reverse the colors. So maybe the second pair could be cream and then the alpaca could be done in the dark charcoal. That makes good use of your leftovers. So these are also knit on 2.75 millimeter needles. The same colors I've just showed you, the charcoal, the parchment, the grays, the blues, and they are machine washable and the pattern is available in store or on Ravelry. And there's a matching hat to go with it too. So with your leftovers from the socks, you could knit the matching hat and just have to buy an extra skein of the main color. Really fun to knit. Um, you would learn a little bit of feral technique on a very small area. And the main thing to remember when you're doing the fair isle is that you have to be consistent in carrying the yarns across the back. You don't want these poor little animals to look puckered and pulled in. So you have to maintain a tension that's a little bit looser than your regular knitting. The rest of the sock features a texture pattern, which we call the box stitch. It creates tiny little squares. And I will bring that up closer to the camera so you can see detail. So there we have the alpaca prancing around and then the detail of the pattern stitch. Very textured. Probably doesn't show up as well in the darker color as it would in a medium tone. And again, the slip stitch heel. So, the colors I've shown you here, and we're on to, um, hmm, got my piles mixed up now. 
we've done three. Oh yes, okay. So I'm always a little bit confused when we get to Friday afternoon. This is our basic sock recipe. It's an available free with any sock yarn that you purchase either online or in the store. And it's a good beginner pattern just to learn how to knit a sock from the cuff down and how to work with the four needles, how to shape the heel, the gusset, and the toe. Once you master your first pair of socks, it is such a rewarding experience. You feel like a true architect because this is the only type of knitting pattern where you're creating a turn or a different direction as you're knitting. And it's all done without sewing any pieces. And it's all done while stitches stay on the needle. And along the heel, of course, you do have to pick up some new stitches. It's quite magical. Whoever invented the sock, we should always applaud them. So this is knit in one of our favorite self-striping, perfectly paired sock yarns by Timber Yarns. And the magic happens from one skein to the neck. So for example, this is Love Bug. This is her 10 color repeat pattern. Some of the colors are six to eight color repeats. This one has 10 individual colors before it repeats. How she can dye that, I just, I don't know. So one skein knits one sock, the second skein knits the second sock, and just like magic, the two socks will match completely from beginning to end. With your leftovers, you can knit a little baby pair of socks. We also supply you with that free pattern with purchase of any yarn. So in store at the moment, we have Licorice All Sorts and Love Bug. Each of these comes with a Progress Keeper. Licorice All Sorts comes with the Licorice Progress Keeper and Love Bug comes with a little Volkswagen Beetle. If you prefer to have heel and toe in a contrast color, we generally pair the All Sorts with the medium blue and Love Bug with the purple. So you have a purple heel and toe this one called Muskoka Memories unfortunately is sold out but we have paired it with the turquoise heel and the turquoise toe. We don't generally do the cuff in a different color just the heel and the toe because when you're wearing them on your feet that's what you'll see the most of. And I will show you how all sorts knits up and also love bug closer to the camera because we haven't had time to knit up all the different colorways. So this is the all sorts striping, just like our favorite candies. It's been very popular for the last two Christmases. And then her newer color, which has not been knit up at Christmas yet, is Love Bug. So there is a picture of the full color sequence. It's really her brightest colorway to date and it's just so happy and full of life. One of the ladies who was in last Wednesday has knit up one sock already in Love Bug and it just wakes you right up, perks up your day. So I'll try to get a picture next week when she's in again. She might have two socks finished. So that is Muskoka Memories. Okay, ah, we've got a new pair of socks. I don't think you've seen these yet. These are solar socks. Now the pattern for this one is a free pattern on Ravelry and I will provide all the links to the patterns I've shown you today in the comments if you uh, wait a few minutes after the live video. So solar. You can see it's a little bit shorter in the pattern and we've added the standard length Generally, when you're knitting a sock, if you like a standard leg length to the heel, use one of your double pointed needles as a measuring stick and that will get you from the cast on to the top of the heel. A DPN or double point needle is generally six and a half inches. 
so why not use it as a little measuring tool? So the fun thing about these socks, according to the pattern, are it's like walking on sunshine, relating to energy derived from the sun's rays. So there's an interesting little pattern happening in there with a bit of lace, nothing too challenging. But what it does is it takes a self-striping yarn from straight stripes to more of a zigzag stripe. So it gives the, the colorway even more interest. And I will bring that up to the camera. Um, the yarn that we've used for this is golden made by pro lana so we have three colors in stock they're all very soft muted feminine colors and self-striping but this particular yarn is a mixture of cotton and wool and nylon so it's especially nice for somebody who cannot wear too much wool and who feels that wool fiber is just too itchy the other important thing about this yarn is that it has elasticity built into the spin of the fiber so for anybody who has um, circulation issues diabetes um, especially they need to wear a sock that doesn't constrict around their their leg so this is a very good choice for anybody on your list who may have circulation issues or who cannot wear a high percentage of wool. So I will bring that up to show you. I'm getting my work out today. Just a very simple but effective pattern and you can see how the color creates a scallop effect. So that seems to be the trend now for self-striping sock yarns. We've done so many with the plain stocking stitch stripe and now we're looking for interesting patterns that create the illusion of waves or zigzags. So these socks are knit with one ball, also 100 grams, like the other ones I showed you. And those are, I have to look at the shelf, they are $16 a ball. So again, very affordable to your holiday budget. And the pattern is free on Ravelry. I will provide the link in the comments. Um, okay, where are we going now? That was sock number five. Oh, another new pair of socks. And I wish you could just feel how soft these are. They're actually still damp because I blocked them last night. These are called If I Were a Frog, which relates more to the color than anything else. And um, I knit them a little bit shorter in the leg because I thought it's such a feminine, lacy pattern that it would suit being a shorter sock. But you do have plenty of yardage in one skein of this yarn that you can knit them much longer. I had at least 25, I'd say probably 20 to 25 grams left over. I could also knit a baby pair to match for mother and daughter or mother and niece that would be very cute so these are called if i were a frog and the yarn that we're using for this is the riverside studio mcn which is merino cashmere and nylon and i know there's a lot of you sending out hearts right now who have knit with this yarn and absolutely are addicted to it once you try it your fingers just crave more and more of it it could be the cashmere content um, it could be her wonderful speckling dye work, or it could be the merino content. It's just a combination of everything. So these are knit cuff down, very simple. It is a lace rib pattern, slip stitch heel, and toes are grafted. The pattern is free in store with the purchase of the yarn. One skein is 36, and again, that is the higher end because of course it has cashmere in it. So it creates a very elastic leg section due to the rib pattern. And you can see how the lace work shows up and those speckles are just delightful. 
They almost look like Christmas lights to me. Does anyone agree with me? Or am I just seeing Christmas now, day and night? So that is a brand new sample, which is going in the store as of today. So that is number six on our list of 12 socks of prancing. Number seven is a very um, popular boot sock. We're gonna go now into the heavier weights of sock yarn. The first section was all the fingering weight, which is standard for socks. But now we're going to speed things up because some of you need um, to knit more than a few pairs of socks before December 25th. So you need all the help you can get, bigger needles and thicker yarn. Ridge socks, again, are cuffed down on four needles, four millimeter, and it's a nice plush worsted weight wool blend. And the colors are, some of the colors, I don't have all of them out, are in this basket right here. So it is a two skein project because of the contrast. Machine washable, easy care, which is great. And it is a beginner pattern. There's a very, very simple textured rib pattern that goes down the leg and continues along the top of the foot. We've done the cuff in the contrast color to mimic the look of a work sock. And we've done the contrast color in the heel and the toe. You could choose not to do the contrast color if you're a beginner and you're a little bit nervous about adding colors and changing, but you're still going to have to use two skeins regardless, so why not have fun and pick one contrast color and one main color. So that pattern is available just in store, mail order or pickup. And again, it's knit on four millimeter. It's a very quick sock pattern and there are three sizes so you can do women's and men's sizes. Ridge socks, um, beginner level. And then our next pair of socks are also in the same worsted weight yarn, so they are considered a boot sock. And these are Keeper of the Woods. And they have a pretty little pine tree or Christmas tree, depending on how you want to knit it. And a ridge before and after to outline the tree motif. Both, both sides of the socks have the tree motif. There are no cables involved. It could be a beginner project too if you're comfortable um, knitting and purling and following a sequence of those stitches. Cuff down four millimeter and again it's the same colors I just showed you for ridge socks. Now this will require one skein for the lady size which I've knit up. So it is a smaller foot. If you do the larger sizes into the men's shoe sizes, it does require the second skein. But if you have three skeins, you get two pairs of socks. So that is quite economical in itself. And the pattern is available on Ravelry and in store. Keeper of the Woods socks. And I think you'd like to see the tree a little bit closer for the detail. Just a simple little motif in reverse stocking stitch and stocking stitch. So that is a very popular one especially with our cold weather that will be coming up eventually. Uh, nice to wear around the house as a slipper sock, a bed sock, or in snow boots and skidoo boots. And then we have the uh, Simply Marvelous sock. There's an extra L in there. And you can probably tell why, because of the coloring. So these are what we call our chicken noodle soup socks. They make you feel so good as soon as you slip into them. Whether you've had a rough day or you're just not feeling well. This is the cure 
for anything that might ail you. They are knit cup down on a four millimeter needle or set of needles, VPNs. And uh, the magic is in the coloring that you put together. So you customize your own moral effect as you go because you're using two different colors. And the more contrast between the colorways creates more of the moral effect. So that is what you want. They knit up extremely quick. They are very, very simple. And I think some of our sock knitters have knit at least five or six pairs of these for past Christmases. They're really in demand every year. Um, what else can I tell you? The pattern is on Ravelry. We also have it in store. I will provide the link in the comment. If you're looking on Ravelry yourself, you just have to remember it's Marl with an L at the end, dash Marlvillis. It's a tongue twister. So colors that we have for that, suggested colors, it's really up to you what you like. The original one was using the parchment as the background color and then a very bright kind of red-blue rainbow color. So this is the self-striping with jacquard coloring. So one skein and one ball will make at least one pair. And then another color combo would be the teal blue-gray with the parchment. But you can really choose anything. You can put it with a dark gray and you can put it with a light gray. There's just so many different colors to play with. You can use some of your stash yarns, even if your colors are different. Nobody would know that that colorway came from the same ball of yarn, now would they? So simply marvelous socks. And then we are on to, oh, even heavier. Okay, these are our new addition to the On the Rocks collection of winter accessories. And they are a chunky weight sock. So you would not be able to wear these in a slipper or a shoe. They're just a little bit too thick for that. They're meant to wear in definitely a winter boot or around the house as a reading, lounging type sock with your sweatpants and hoodies. They do take um, three skeins because of the red stripe and the cream. If you wanted to knit the socks all in one colorway, you could get away with two 100 gram skeins. And it's a good thing to make note of. The heavier the yarn, the more skeins you'll need because heavier yarns have less yardage per skein. This is a very plush, squishy, soft uh, wool blend machine washable and these are beginner level socks they are knit on a 4.5 circular or double point needle set and the colors I've just put a few in the bottom here the red the salt and pepper in the dark and then you could also choose instead of the salt and pepper you could choose the dark charcoal so they come in a pattern set which includes the pattern for wrist warmers to match so two skeins of the salt and pepper color, one skein of the cream, one skein of the red will create both items on the pattern. And a pair of socks on that size needle, 4.5, would average two nights, two nights for a quick knitter, three nights for a medium uh, knitter. So definitely in demand for men and women alike. Teenagers love them too. And um, now we're at slippers. I thought I'd put a pair of slippers in too because slippers always make great Christmas gifts. And they are knit very much like a sock. Um, in the old days, we used to have slippers that were knit um, with a sole or the back of the heel that you had to sew together or the top of the foot that you had to seam together and they were a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. I find that this type of slipper fits just as nice as the older style slippers do 
but it's much easier to knit. The pattern is knit just like a sock. You cast on at the ankle, you knit your cuff, you do your heel, and then you work down to the toe, which also makes it very easy to size. This way you can knit to whatever size foot you need. You could do any size for um, men or women in the particular pattern. You could also downsize the pattern by using smaller needles and thinner yarn to a children's size. It's always good to do a test knit first. So I always advise knitters, if you're thinking of changing the pattern, try to knit the pattern exactly as is the first time according to what's in the pattern or book. And then you've got a visual and then you can make changes to the second or, or third project. So these are in our Saltwater Gifts book. That's the newest book in the trilogy from uh, Newfoundland by two wonderful knitters who've worked for years to bring together all the traditional knitting patterns from the island and put them into a book with, um, I think they've, they've added some of their own styles too. So I'm going to show you the picture of this pattern. It's called Seafaring Slippers. You'll easily knit these in one night. So there they've done a blue pair and a chocolate brown pair in pure wool, Canadian wool. And they are knit on a five millimeter double point set. And there's another picture in the blue. But besides the wonderful slippers, this book has 25 other designs for gift giving. Pillows, hats, socks, mittens, gloves, dog bandanas, tea cozies, anything you can think of that is a small accessory and can be knit. And they are knit with two strands held together of our classic wool worsted. So two strands which you would easily hold together. Two balls will do an adult pair, one ball will do a smaller foot. We've used the light salt and pepper color, but we also have it in the dark salt and pepper, and we have it in, oh, at least 12 other solid colors. Some of the knitters have taken two different solid colors together. This is just an example, so I don't have to get up and go to the yarn shelf. So you can take two different colors and knit them together and you'll create your own salt and pepper looking slippers. So they are extremely cozy. They stretch nicely because of the cable and the purl stitches on either side. Um, what's in the book is written out to fit a lady's size eight to nine, but you have enough yarn that you can keep knitting before you start the decreases or shorten the foot if it's a smaller shoe size. So here they are close up on our sock stretchers. The only thing I would do different when knitting the next pair would be to knit a longer rib section for the cuff so it goes up a little bit higher on the ankle because that's generally a cold spot on our legs and then if you have a longer cuff you can fold them down and it just gives it a really nice boot, boot look, booty look. And there's the cable detail on top. So you have the choice of knitting with the pure wool which is suggested in the book and that means you'd have to hand wash or machine wash um, in the delicate or gentle cycle and dry flat. But if you are giving anything that's pure wool to somebody that you're not sure of in terms of how they will wash and care for things, you might be better off to use um, the worsted weight in a machine washable blend. So that's a wool nylon acrylic blend. It has some interesting colors, some neutrals, some brights, and cost-wise it works out to about the same, yardage-wise it's the same. It, it all just boils down to 
if it should go in the wash machine or will somebody care for it and wash it by hand. So those are seafaring slippers and I have one more to make the final, the twelfth pair, and I will have to go get it. Okay, so this one is our Muskoka Santa sock, which sits on my front door of the store. Um, it actually knits up very quickly. There is the pattern. And it is available on Ravelry and in-store. This is knit from the cuff down. It's a jumbo stocking or Christmas sock. And then it's put in the wash machine for one cycle, which will shrink and boil and felt the wool. Then it feels just like a felt fabric. It's very dense, it's not see-through, and it will not stretch no matter how many toys you put in here. So it's a great front door decoration. And it's also great hanging on the uh, mantle, maybe on the bottom of the staircase. You can personalize it and decorate it lots of different ways. I put in a couple balls of yarn and knitting needles. And so, yes, that will stay on the front door from now until Christmas if you feel like dropping in and asking questions about how it's knit. It's knit using a pure wool, which is barely spun. This is the classic wool roving by Peyton, made in Canada. And it's a chunky weight yarn. So it does have to be a pure wool that's not super wash to create something that you're going to felt. We have it in all sorts of traditional colors and the pattern itself has two different sizes. I've shown you the jumbo one and there is one that's more of a regular size stocking. Uh, we use an 8 millimeter circular needle, 24 inch. So what you're doing is creating a wide stocking and probably two times longer than what it looks like when it's felted. And the amount of yarn used in the 100 grams will be two balls of the main color and one of the contrast. There's a pretty little uh, dotted stitch that goes through the main part of the stocking and then of course the contrast color for the heel, the toe, the hanger, and the top pattern. The top section has some baubles, but you could also knit it plain. It's up to you. Looks great hanging on a fireplace mantle and there are the two sizes side by side. So now we've come to, that's the end of our 12 socks of prancing, but I thought I would give you a little bit of sock trivia while we're on the subject. Um, so what I've been reading about is the oldest sock known to mankind. It was discovered in Egypt and it actually is constructed unlike our socks nowadays. So our socks nowadays, of course, have just a solid foot or a solid toe. This sock is 1700 years old and it has a split toe, which would be evidence that um, in Egypt they were wearing their socks with sandals. So there's a little pinch in the center and there's a separate section for three toes and then a separate section for two toes. So it looks very, very different from our regular socks that we knit nowadays. And the other thing that's interesting is that it was knit using naturally dyed yarns. So they've been able to, um, scientists have been able to dissect the sock, which is living in a museum and they've come to the realization that they used three basic natural dyes to create a variety of colors. So the first one is matter root, which creates the red color. The second one is woad leaves, which creates the blue color. And the third one is weld flowers, which creates a yellow. 
but they were able to do multiple dye baths. So they would dip it in one color dye and then maybe over to the blue and then that would create an over dye. And um, yeah, I just think that's fascinating that natural dyes have been around since the beginning of mankind and that a sock has survived 1700 years. That means a pair of socks that you knit may survive even longer. So I will post the link to that interesting sock so you can see the colors and the split toe construction. That will be in the comments. And that will be it for today. Um, I hope everyone has enjoyed this segment on the four weeks of knitness and had some new inspiration for knitting up some gifts for family and friends. I'll be back next uh, Wednesday at 3.30 for the usual virtual yarn shopping edition. And then I'll be back next Friday at 3 p.m. for another episode in our Knitmas series. And I'll be featuring 12, hmm, it'll be an accessory and it'll be something that you wear around your neck. How's that for a clue?